you again to this opportunity to uh, celebrate and worship and gather together, it's clearly virtually, but uh, together no doubt in the spirit that binds us together and through the word and the sacrament that continually provide for us life and hope and direction. Um, again, we also, uh, just as a reminder, we do celebrate the uh, sacrament today. So um, uh, for those of you that uh, uh, wish, gather please your, uh, the elements to the uh, communion so that as we celebrate that later on in the hour, that uh, we can share that ensemble and be connected again by the spirit that uh, continues to give life. Um, also, uh, uh, direct your attention to the uh, contribution uh, opportunities that are available online there. Uh, please be as uh, generous as you, as you can. Uh, St. Paulus uh, continues to, to struggle with um, uh, direction and, uh, and uh, anticipating its future. Uh, hopefully at one point we will uh, re-enter a new facility, uh, both uh, pandemic-wise and also construction-wise. We've been waiting for a long time for, uh, for this. Uh, but we are in certainly need of your continued support, uh, not only spiritually, but also particularly uh, uh, materially, so uh, please be generous. And um, I also uh, uh, understand the uh, the the, uh, the burdens that are are placed upon us through this uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, shelter-in-place mandate. And I would encourage you clearly to stay um, stay safe and uh, follow the directions of our of our leadership and. Um, at least uh, the, uh, the leadership that is um, uh, that is uh, feeding on on uh, data and science and good uh, good order, please. Um, today as well, uh, I, we have a special uh, delight that uh, the um, uh, readings. Um, uh, certainly, I will do the gospel, but my daughter uh, will delightfully um, share the uh, epistle lesson from Romans. So um, we'll have a chance to sort of expand the, uh, the, the staffing of this. She will come from behind the, the camera and we'll, um, uh, we'll provide the opportunity to hear the letters of St. Paul. Um, but in all cases, uh, I wish that the uh, uh, spirit be clearly available and uh, alive in your lives as you hear and participate in this service of worship. Um, all things in order. Uh, let us begin with the first hymn, uh, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We have the um, delight of having my daughter, Christy, um, provide for us a uh, reading from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. It is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Holy Gospel is recorded in the Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. It's a continuation from last week's uh, Gospel lesson in which uh, Peter makes that uh, marvelous and powerful witness 
saying that, yes, we know who you are, Jesus. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. But then Jesus goes on and teaches. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their lives? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of the Father, and he will repair the one for what has been done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Over the last last months, uh, probably even more than that, there have been, uh, been a rather significant opportunity to look at the um, at the history and and uh, unfolding of the civil rights movement in the U.S. Just the other day. Uh, and they've had a chance to watch the uh, watch a, a documentary uh, about the march. Uh, you may know or not know, but that that uh, that documentary uh, itemized and described the, uh, the, the the 1963 given the 1963 march on Washington that was called by uh, by a number of of uh, civil rights uh, organizations of the day, and it gave particular uh, attention to and provided uh, the, uh, the sort of the opportunity to uh, to highlight uh, not only not only Martin Luther King Jr. for his leadership, but also that uh, powerful and and uh, memorable "I Have a Dream" speech. Powerful stuff, and it had an amazing effect. It just it, uh, there were 250,000 people that were gathered there on the on the Washington Mall, and heard that speech, and gathered from all corners of the United States to to uh, um, lay before the, the not only themselves but also the world the desire and the need and the importance of, of civil rights. For um, uh, particularly for African Americans, um, it was curious to me, however, uh, that even though this this march, clearly a historic uh, historic drama that we should never ever forget, but it was interesting that the commentary, one of the one of the folks that was narrating this this um, uh, documentary added some words towards the end of this documentary that, uh, uh, that were a bit, uh, uh, a bit attentive to the realities of our own day. And he described it in, in ways that were almost heartbreaking. He said that if the 250,000 people that had been gathered there on that wall in Washington 
that August day in 1963, if they all had gone home and with the same zeal and the same, same commitment and the same sort of, uh, sort of drive, would have engaged the work of civil rights of lifting up justice for the African American, if they had gone home to do that and would have done that, the world would not have, have been the same. The world would not have been the world that we have seen in our own day of the, of the George Floyds and the, and the knee upon the throat. We would not have seen the kind of, the kind of of uh, brokenness that is that is seemingly everywhere rampant that this that this uh, uh, almost uh, uh, almost uh, famine or this uh, this this, uh, this pandemic of racism would have somehow been minimally or maybe powerfully changed if people had gone home and had done the work engaged the work of civil rights. Maybe, maybe the world would not have been so, so, uh, uh, so, so shaped in a way that, uh, you know, that, that phrase, driving while black, would not have uh, been necessary, or that, or that the, the warehousing of, of African American black men in penitentiaries would not be there. That march happened 57 years ago. Now, I have no, I have no, no complaint, no, uh, no, no reason for for bringing any shadows upon its outcome. Its effect clearly has been powerful, but there has been an equal and almost overpowering resistance to the to the to the work of civil rights, to the work of, of engagement. Of the work of, of transforming this culture and this this uh, bring a cure to this almost addiction that seemingly the United States holds in racism and and bigotry and white supremacy and division. This has not been a productive time for transformation, and yet, yet let me tell you, I believe that there are some incredible evidences within our own historic moment that I think rival the 1963 March on Washington. And that began, I think, in 2013 upon the, uh, the, 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 the injustice and the, and the, and the uh, awful response of a jury to the to the to the actions of a of a murderer of Trayvon Martin. I don't know if you remember that, but the man was was acquitted, totally acquitted. There was no there's no consequence. And from that injustice, there were three African American women, totally women who took it upon themselves to begin the movement which has now become the powerful, the powerful and ever-present ever sense of, of, the, of the Black Lives Matter movement. There have been, this has been, I think, one of the, one of the most dramatic and one of the most incredible uh, developments in our own generation, when it comes to dealing with, or it comes with, with sensibilities having to do with, with, the, with the, this, this, this continuing racism within our own country. Now, these women, these women drew from history, they drew from current events, they drew from the blood and the, and the death of so many of their brothers and sisters. They arose from the sense of, of the injustices that have been totally 
have been continually committed in the name of American justice systems that indeed there has been there has been movement and yet it was in that moment that these three women established this movement called Black Lives Matter and it has been for so many a sign and an evidence that indeed people are taking this matter seriously. Not so much like, like the like 1963 march, but going into their homes, going into their home bases, going into city after city, going into household after household, and bringing this message, bringing this, this incredibly human response of, of compassion and care and a cry for justice. Black lives do matter. And that indeed there is, there is a, a payment of blood and death and brokenness that has given rise to this Black Lives Matter. Now, I am loath to, uh, to, to, to suggest, but I am tempted that indeed this human, this human uh, sort of development of Black Lives Matter has as part of its heritage so many characteristics of what it would mean for one to be engaged with the, the notion of, of, of the Christian mission, of the Christian discipleship. Now, I'm certainly not uh, willing to, to parallel the two, but I am tempted to see in the midst of this Black Lives Matter movement an important element for, for our lives together as Christians. You know, Christians like, like St. Peter in last week's Gospel, Christians have, have always been able to say, oh, Jesus is the Messiah, is the Son of the living God. We have built churches to, to glorify such, uh, such, such commitment. We have, we have put on the cloak of righteousness and of, and of sense of, 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 of um, identity as if somehow we have held firm this, this mission and this, and this confession of Jesus as, as Messiah. But in the same fashion as Peter, as Peter ongoing, began to be uneasy about Jesus and about his way of life and his call to discipleship, so the Christian movement, the Christian life, the Christian culture in which we have lived and have sustained. When the words of Jesus, when the, when the call of Jesus to discipleship, when the, 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 uh, the challenge to take up your cross and follow me is laid before Christians, they too often look for their easy chairs. And they back away from, from the sense of the, the, the importance and the seriousness and the critical nature of following Jesus' way. And they basically see their, their, their activities not as, as built on flesh, on, on blood and, and difficulty and struggle, but on maintaining the culture of our day. I think in some ways this racism has, in, in, in powerful ways, has, has depended upon Christians avoiding and, and ignoring the ways of Jesus. We may confess him as, as, as Messiah and the Son of the living God, but when he calls to us to follow, and to base our lives on his model. We are sorry, representatives. In fact, we may even go on as aiding and abetting the kind of addiction to racism 
that this culture has continued to reflect. It is on the basis of Jesus' work and his, and his walk and his call to nonviolence, to suffering love, to engagement with, with the victim, to be engaged and, and, and one with those that, that, are, that are broken under the weight of, of, of this addictive culture. It is in that context that Jesus calls us to take up our cross and follow him. It is so important that our lives reflect and, and, and be determined by the way in which Jesus walked. It is giving up our, our, our uh, sense of, of, of importance and knowing that our lives need to be identified just as, as those folks in, 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 19, in, in 2013 saw that they need to be engaged with those who are victimized, those who are broken, those who suffer under injustice. That's, what Jesus, that's where Jesus was. And that's where he walked. That's where he engaged. And he said, follow me. These women show more, more discipleship character and, and, and spirit than most of us easy chair Christians. We are called to be disciples of Jesus. We are called to be his witness, to follow in his ways. And he says very clearly that if you want to be my disciple, if you want to be my disciple, there are decisions to be made day by day. Day by day to lose your life in order to find it. To follow the footsteps, the ways, the means, the patterns of Jesus' life. To seek the kind of understanding and the kind of of care and compassion for the victim, for those who are broken, as Jesus did. That is our calling. That is who we are, 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 are to be as followers of Jesus. You know, in the midst of these reflections, I came upon, once again, that incredible prayer by, by, by um, St. Francis. And I, in fact, I wrote it out so that it could be understood. In fact, I would urge you all to take this prayer of St. Francis and to put it on paper and stick it on, your, on the mirror of your, of, your, of, your, of your bathroom window or mirror so that every morning you see this. Put it on your table where every time you, you take a bite to eat, you read and to hear it again. Hear what it says. This is the way of Jesus. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much to seek, be, seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as much to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us confess together our faith.
faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I, I believe, believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit born on the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again, just living in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all persons according to their needs. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, Messiah, Son of the living God, we come to you humble by your Son, educated by the, by the words of St. Peter, brought face to face with our own necessities, our own need for transformation. We pray, Lord, that you would lead us in the way of your Son, Jesus. That you would transform us from death-dealing to life-giving. That you would awaken us to hope, not cynicism, to determination and discipleship, not despair. Call us from the darkness in which we have become so mired into the light of your life-giving discipleship. Draw us always into your way so that we might be your disciples and might bring the power of your love to bear upon a broken world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, here it hurts. We pray today, Lord, for all your children, all those who are in need of your particular mercies and graces. But today we pray especially, we pray especially for Sandy, that she might be assured of your presence and drawn into the into the compassion and care of your spirit. We pray for Bob, who anticipates surgery. We pray that you will bear in him your healing might, that you will comfort his spirit and give him peace in all ways. We pray for Cindy and for Nancy in their recovery. We pray for Helen, and for Zoe, for the whole of the Snell family in their grief. We pray for Maureen and the healing, the continued healing of her body. We pray for Karen Steele as she recovers in her healing. We pray for the Cher family in their grief. We pray for Dylan for Tava, for Devin, for Brady. We pray, dear Father, that your grace and mercy might surround and uphold them all. We also pray in thanksgiving for the lives of Christy and Barbara that celebrate their birthdays. We give thanks for the life that they have brought. Sustain them always in your grace. Move them always in mercy and in love. We pray as well today for those that suffer from the hardship of fire and disaster. We pray for those that have been afflicted by Hurricane Laura. We pray for those who are 
are harmed by the, by the virus, who suffer brokenness and loss, not only personally but economically, that they might be sustained in their burdens and be given the life-giving presence of your spirit, that they may endure all things. Lord, in your mercy, Hear your prayers. gracious Father, we pray as well for the world all around, the world filled with refugees, with immigrants, with victims of violence and warfare, of distress and brokenness and famine. We pray, Lord, that we not ever become complacent or find our easy chairs but be inspired and moved to lead with compassion, to reach out and risk, to seek justice. And Lord, dear Father, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as is to be as to love as it is in giving that we receive, and that it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth, sea, and all their creatures, with angel, archangel, cherubim, and seraphim, we laud and magnify your glorious name. We join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord. For our God, our power and might, Heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you send to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
In the same way also after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he, broke, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this with the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, and his, we await his coming in glory, Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity that we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his confidence to find you and give you his favor in the name of his Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
again today. Celebrate this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Pray that the word of the scriptures, songs sung, and the prayers prayed will bring hope and sustenance and strength to your discipleship. And in the midst of all, that you will be carried by the Spirit of the Lord through all things. We pray to, as well that uh, as you if you reflect on today's life-giving word, that you be as generous as possible in your giving so that the words can continually be displayed and proclaimed to the world. We pray as well that in the midst of all the circumstances that overwhelm and, and move upon us that you will be encouraged and sustained by the Spirit in all ways. May your days be blessed and may the life of the Spirit control and direct your ways in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.